you talked about uh, before San Antonio, before today, what was the verdict? Much better. I mean, aside from the offensive rebounding, um, you know, I think 12 or 15, um, they were timely, but um, in general, you know, you want to get that number down. The, the fact that, you know, it was less than two points per opportunity, that helps. You know, if, they're, if they're getting 12 uh, offensive rebounds and getting 20, 22 points, and that really, you know, that, that, hurt, that hurts. So 12 for 15, obviously we don't, it's not ideal, but um, we were able to kind of scramble out, find a way to either get a stop um, or limit their, their second chance opportunities. What was Trez able to take advantage of tonight? You no, know, they're going to put a lot of pressure on Brad and, and, you know, our smalls. So with them up the floor, he got below his defender. And, you know, as a big guy, he gets, uh, he catches it in the paint and he, he can finish. Um, his activity along the dunker, along the baseline, on all our penetration, um, help steps up. He's he's the you know benefactor of a lot of those situations. Um, our, this answer might differ after a loss, but if Spencer has 11 assists, are you okay with three points? Uh, you know, and I'd say in a perfect world, no. <laughs> but you know, the fact that he's you know trying to get other guys involved, um, of course he's going to be aggressive, and I, I want him to continue to do that. But he's not going to force the issue. If it's not there, get off of it. You know, and I think he did. What was different about the defense in the fourth quarter? Just a little bit more urgency, you know, and I think it's, you know, teams are going to make runs and, you know, you know obviously we, we, we make a run at some point, you know, your opponent's going to do so. So how, how do you withstand those, you know, ebbs and flows? You have to dig down, you know, and it, we didn't change a whole lot of what we were doing. We just did it harder, did it with more urgency, more physicality, um, you know, a little bit more communication. So, um, you know, our care factor goes up in those situations, which it has to in the fourth quarter. And what do you think allowed uh, Davis to kind of have a little bit of a breakout game here? You know what? It, it's not for the lack of effort. He's been trying to get going. And, you know, we've said it all along. If he, that first one goes in, you know, teams start to relax a little bit. All right. He's not going to press. Um, and we have the utmost confidence that he's going to make that next shot. And so it's great to see it go in and, you know, I think it, it does wonders for, for your offense. Wes, I know you're worried about other things, but uh, how much do you think Montrez feeds off the crowd? I'm sure quite a bit. I mean, he's an emotional player. Um, you know, those, those are big plays that he makes and they're momentum swings. You can feel the energy change. And I think it's uh, not only good for him, but uh, those, those plays impact, you know, our bench, they impact – um, our overall energy. So it's, uh, it's, it's great. You know, and I just, it's one of those things where when it doesn't go well, you know, you, you gotta be cautious because you don't want that energy to go the other way. So the fact that it's, you know, it, those plays, you know, manifest, it brings juice and energy into the building. It, uh, I think it helps us a lot. So many of, of your team's top net rating lineups include him. Mm -hmm. uh, I would I don't have the numbers in front of me, but the majority of them, he's involved. Uh, how much stock do you put in that? He's a good player. <laughs> and he's impacted a lot of our wins. Uh, so, yeah, it makes sense. Um, you know, I've said it before. He was sixth man of the year for a reason. It's not like this is unique for him. He's, he's done this with other teams. His ability to come in and change the complexion of the game through uh, the hustle plays, the scoring, the energy, the rebounding, whatever it is, um, he has an impact. What do you think about was it to have Rui back on the bench? Oh, it's it's tremendous. You know, I think it's uh, it's not only good for him; it's good for our group. You know, because he's one of us, and to have our our group starting to take shape and take and be whole, uh, it's just one more step in that direction. What do you think about the way Daniel Gafford played against Carl Anthony Towns? He was good, and you know what, it, he was he was phenomenal. But I have to give Kyle a lot of credit because we're we're asking him uh, to guard one of the most prolific offensive players in the league and size disadvantage, whatever. Not once did he complain, you know, he's going to take the beating. He tried to do his best at times we bought help. Um, but I thought it also helped uh, allow Gaff to kind of roam and clog up the paint, take away some of the, their cutting, their activity off of, you know, what, what uh, Towns brings. So Towns got going, of course, you know, at some point, you know, he is, but I thought it helped limit, some of the other things that open up, you know, versus traditional coverages. Um, but, but Gaff was great. And he had an opportunity to guard him as well. Trez did as well. Um, but I think Kuz, you know, he's got to get the lion's share of the credit. 
I feel like we keep asking you about Brad and, and the lower scoring and everything like that. Is is this, I think he had like nine, nine uh, assists, six boards, 19 points. Is that pretty ideal for what you want if this group is clicking and everyone's scoring? I mean, I'd, I'd love to see it be higher, but I'm sure he would too. Right, like 34. <laughs> but, you know, I think when, when you're winning and, you know, you have 34 assists as a team, that's a heck of a number. Uh, so there's no way to mask that. That means everybody is moving the ball. And obviously we're stepping up and making shots, so uh, that helps. But I think that has to be our recipe. Now, whether he's the benefactor of it or he's the one, you know, dishing them out, I don't think it matters. If, if we're making the right reads, we're winning games, or we're playing the right way, you know, I, I'll live with it. And hopefully he can too. You're on. Um, Coach, you just mentioned the, the 34 assists, uh, but not only that, it, it, you, you guys had a lot of hockey assists. Where is it coming from, you know, the, this ball movement? Is, is it something uh, from, from practices or just confidence uh, and players, uh, you know, loving uh, sharing the ball? Well, I think it's both. I mean, we haven't had a ton of practice, but um, it's been something we've preached since day one. And at times it's we've seen it. You know, tonight's a great example of that. Other times we haven't. So just trying to find that balance where we can get some consistency in that area. Now you can look at the stat sheet and say, well, you know, we didn't have a lot of assist on this particular night. Sometimes it's just the fact we don't make shots. Um, those same looks are, you know, being created. We do have to step up and make them. But when you start seeing that, I think it's contagious, just like the, you know, the energy component. A uh, guy makes a big play. It gets the whole crowd juiced up, gets your bench juiced up. Um, when the ball is moving like that and guys are sharing it, getting it off of it, in a timely manner, uh, I think that's contagious as well. Thank you. Wayne. How you doing, Coach? Plenty of times you told me that this team has enough. When you get a bounce back win like this, as a coach, how do you feel about, you know, the, the response from your, from your squad? I think it's tremendous. I mean, it's, you know, I'm not the only one upset about the loss in San Antonio. I mean, it's, uh, I think everyone, you know, felt disappointed. Obviously, we didn't play our best basketball. Um, you know, still a winnable game, but we did not play the way we wanted and the way we intended on doing so. So to see us bounce back, it's, it's, it's a good sign. Um, but now that we've gotten a taste of, okay, we can do this, let's try to continue to sustain our play. Let's not have those lapses. Let's not have those nights where, you know, we kind of get bogged down and we, we don't get to, to our spots. We're not organized. Uh, we don't play with purpose or energy. Let's try to avoid those stretches. And lastly, Coach, you, you mentioned in the uh, beginning presser about the big three. How do you feel just overall collectively you, you guys contain not only them, but just the just, uh, Minnesota Timberwolves in general? Oh, uh, yeah, that, at times great. You know, obviously, you know, Cat had big numbers. Um, and they're really talented offensive players. So it's, you know, you're not going to take everything away. Can you take away some of the easy opportunities? You know, can you minimize, you know, uh, the offensive rebounds, the, the transition points? You know, those areas that we can control, you know, they're, they're going to throw in the post and he's going to, um, you know, he's a really good player. So um, we'll live with some of that. You know, obviously we can bring help. We can do other things to kind of adjust. But if they're going to try and two us to death, I think it's manageable. Knowing the uh, um, amount of threes that that team takes, you know, we want to kind of stay away from overhelp situations and opening up the three-point line. You guys were able to lock down defensively in the fourth quarter. What changed? Um... Well, win the game, man. <laughs> it's time to uh, go out there and get a win. Um, that was a back and forth game, um, you know, all the way up into the fourth quarter. Um, you know, we had to tighten our defense. We had to put together some stops, and um, you know, we started, you know, finding the the plays that they was running on a consistent basis, and we started taking away the things that they was looking for and what they wanted to get to. So, um, you know, I basically told the guys that I started the fourth quarter, man. It's, it's winning time, man. Don't worry about the refs. Don't worry about. What's happened was led all the way up um, to this point, man. It's about winning times, and we're going to go out and take it. Don't worry about, you know, having trying to give it to us or, you know, worry relying on the refs or, you know, trying to make it a close game. Now we're going to go out and take the win. And what was working for you offensively? It was a bit of a bounce back game for you. Just playing hard, man. Uh, playing with great energy, man, um, in a great space. Uh, you know, it's just being able to – Go out there and just enjoy the game, man. Um, you know, I was getting over um, a little bit of a, a cold um, sinuses uh, on the trip and uh, kind of threw me off a little bit as far as my conditioning, um, where I wanted to be at. Um, but, you know, I'm back to myself. It feels good, man. Uh, my brother came down 
um, today. Uh, today was his birthday. Um, Aaron Roundtree, uh, he turned 28 today, man. So it's just good to have, um, you know, great friends, great vibes around you, man, and just carry over to the game, really. Trez, when you only have five home games in a month, do the home game wins actually matter? Or is that just something kind of weird? For sure. They definitely matter, man, because uh, you don't want to – you don't want to lose that edge at home. You don't want to lose that home court, um, you know, love and uh, energy that you have at home, man. And uh, when you know you're not going to be um, in your home arena a lot throughout the month, you don't want to try to drop those games while you're at home, man. We already are not going to be here for to have our fans, um, you know, energize the building and, and, you know, be there behind us and have our back uh, cheering us on how they did tonight. Um, so when we're in this building, we try to, you know, make sure that we rack up the wins and, you know, continue to keep that positive energy. Um, for my fans all the way down throughout the organization. Gaff has said that he kind of judges his energy. Like he tries to bring the same amount of energy that you bring, basically. Um, what have you seen from him in the past? He's got three straight double doubles. Tremendous, now. man. He comes in, he's ready to work. Uh, he's a younger guy, but um, he he wants to, you know, be great. He wants to play this game the correct way. He wants to do everything he can to help us win this game, man. Um, I think, you know, he was... I think this is probably like the third or fourth game, man, where Gaff has just probably had like four or five blocks, man. And they've been like huge time blocks, man. And, you know, he's guarding some some elite guys, man. And, you know, having to be able to protect that basket. I mean, not a lot of guys want to be in that position because you're running the uh the you're running the lane to get dunked on. You know, it's a lot of, you know, it's a lot of contact, a lot of, you know, a lot of guys don't want to be in that position, man. But he goes out there relentlessly, man. And he's swatting shots, uh, changing shots. And on top of that, he's grabbing rebounds left and right, man. So He's playing a, a, a hell of a um, year this year, man. Uh, I'm happy for him, man. Uh, he deserved every penny that he got this year, man. He worked his tail off, and I'm just happy to be able to, you know, look somebody he can look up to um, as far as, you know, wanting to come in and play like and bring the energy, man. It's, it's a huge honor to me. Um, man, I'm having a great deal of fun, man. I'm, I'm just enjoying myself, man, playing this game, getting back to – you know, what I love to do, man, still being able to show people, you know, that I'm still able to play this game to a high level, man. I told y'all this a lot of times. I told y'all this probably every time we had this talk in the media, man. I'm just, you know, blessed to be here, and I'm just enjoying every minute of it, man. Um, you know, it comes out um, whatever way it comes. I just love being able to put it all out there on the floor, man, with the organization and the team and guys behind me. Do you feel, to what degree do you feel like you had something to prove? Um, to be honest with you, man, I really, I really don't, I really, you know, kind of took that chip on my shoulder going around throughout the summer, man, playing all the leagues that I play in, the Drew League, uh, Atlanta, um, uh, when I go to New York, a lot of different leagues that I play in, man, so I had that chip on my shoulder all summer, man, going around playing the places that I played in, man, but when it comes time to, you know, the my work in game settings, man, it's one game at a time, man. It's about doing everything we can to, you know, carry out that game plan and get that win for the night, man, and moving on to the next. Um, you know, but to be honest with you, I'm always a player that plays with a chip on my shoulder. So it's nothing really different from, you know, how I've looked at myself throughout my high school, college, you know, all the way in, up until where I am now in the NBA. You know, I look at myself as the underdog. I've been looked at it um, that way, you know, ever since I've, you know, and blessed to be able to play this game, really, man. It's not going to change now. On your on your assistant in, in the first half uh, to Corey, uh, you guys made them pay for a closeout on Davis Bertans at the three point line. What does it do to the offense? What can it do when he's drawing that type of attention? Um, I mean, honestly, man, it opens um, a great deal of the offense for everybody. Honestly, man, uh, he's a guy that shoots the ball at extremely high clip, man. He's a guy that. You know, people try to run it off the three-point line continuously, um, but we kept him in action where he's constantly moving, constantly running around, man. And, um, you know, it's just great to have him back, man. DB, he's getting back to himself, man. He's shooting the ball. And, um, you know, I told him they don't, you know, make miss or whatever the shot is to go up, man. Keep shooting, man. You're a shooter, man. And he knows that. We know that, man. And it just looks, and it feels great that, you know, he was able to get back out there and start knocking back down shots. And he knocked down some big-time ones for us today. Um you know, a couple of them I felt like could have been maybe four point plays, man. But he's just shooting the ball with great confidence, man. And he's playing with um, tremendous effort on the defense and the floor. That's all we can ask for. Him. The last time you connected with a group of fans, like to this degree? Um, I would say, uh, I would definitely say when I was with the Clippers, um, honestly, um, just because I was able to, you know, build a special 
um, you know, coach off the bench with, you know, guys like, um, you know, guys I played against uh, that was on the other team tonight, Pat Bev, uh, you know, Lou Williams, um, you know, Sundari Stonewell, uh, Jawan Evans, man, like guys like that. Like we built a culture coming off the bench, man. And, and it was one of those things that, you know, people called us the bench squad there. So um, I think that was probably uh, another destination where it's felt, um, you know, the love and the atmosphere and, the, you know, everything the city gives back to it. But um, this this is a whole complete deal, man. This, this is completely different from um, anything that I've ever been in, honestly, um, because like I said, this is an organization who's, you know, been through the ups and downs, uh, you know, good and the bad, uh, you know, all their teams, man. So to actually see us out here and the things that we're doing now, um, we understand that we haven't really done anything and we still have a lot more work to do. But um, the fans are behind us. The city is loving it. And we're just trying to make sure we continue to keep that, that wave going. How great was it to see Rui back on the bench today? Oh, it was great, man. Um, you know, we're we're behind him one hundred percent, man, on the things that he is dealing with, um, personal issues. Um, you know, I don't I won't get too much into that because everybody's personal issues are different, man. But at the end of the day, man, he's still a part of our team. So with him being out there um cheering us on, man, now he's been in practice and involved in shoot around and different things like that as well. So it's great, man. It just shows that he's on the right path to, you know, maybe soon um, be able to, you know, get back with us. But at the same time, man, we're going to continue to keep building. Uh, every guy in here is ready for when that number is called, and we're going to keep uh, continuing to go that way. With the same time, we're going to support the guys who are out as well. Um, he was on the bench. Uh, TB was out there as well, man. So it's just great to see those guys, and we know the work that they're putting in behind closed doors. Neil? Yeah, Neil, you Hey, Trez, when you're animated and, you know, interacting with the crowd, is that something that just happens naturally in the moment? I think I saw you, you know, dap some fans up. Oh, uh, yeah, it is, man. Um, it, it's basically throughout the Florida game. It's, it's the way that I play, man. I love playing with the energy and um, all the tenacity and everything that comes along with the game, man. And, you know, our fans are a part of, part of our, you know, organization as well, man. They're a part of our culture, man. They're cheering us on. Um, night in and night out in this building, man. Uh, no matter we're up, down, I mean, we, we need them just as well as, uh, you know, we need the players sitting on our bench, man. So um, it's big, man. I try to really show fans and um, basically everybody uh, throughout the whole organization, man, that, you know, this is all, you know, one big family, man. It's not just, you know, us coaches and then your know, fans. No, this, this is a whole thing, man. And that's why I try to run it. That's how I try to, you know, embrace it. And I think the fans do a great job, um, you know, feeling that from me. And then after your last bucket against Anthony Edwards, you had the dunk. Um, it looked like you were saying, and I don't know if you remember, <laughs> like, can't they can't guard me. Is that what you were saying? Nah, man, I told them that ain't enough. That ain't enough. You, you, you leaving the... Uh, Point guard, you know nothing against Anthony. Uh, we're actually in the same agency. Um, I gave him a little bit of, a little bit of talk after that. But man, I, I take that as a uh, kind of, I don't know, man, a little bit of disrespect, man. Uh, I'm a bigger guy than that, man. They just want to let them play free, uh, freely, uh, one on one down there. So I told him that that's not enough, man. Got to do a little bit better than that, man. How did it feel to kind of break out there shooting the ball after the first four games? Well, it felt like somebody took the lid off the hoop finally. <laughs> Should have probably done that a long time ago. But, you know, it's the, there's rough stretch, especially coming off the injury, you know, takes some time for legs to get back in the rhythm, and all you can do is just keep shooting in practice, keep shooting games and stay with it. And, you know, when you put in the work, eventually it's going gonna, it's gonna to go this way. Um, was there anything different about this game, or do you feel like you were getting the same looks, they just happened to fall? Um, I think today might have been more of like good ball movement. And I think those are the easier looks always, you know, when you feel like you're taking the right shot and not taking a shot to get yourself going, but you're taking the right shot for the team. And uh, and that was it. I think I, I got those looks that went in, just the feeling was getting better and better. That's it? <laughs> I, got, I got another one. Um, How do you maintain your confidence? Is it, is it ever difficult for someone who's accomplished a shooter in you? Well, I think you could ask uh, all the shooters that have been in this position. I think every single one has been in that position, and uh, and everybody has the same answer. You keep your routine. You keep doing the same things you've been doing for, well, multiple years. And, you know, you just stick to it. You keep, keep working on those shots in practice, and, you know, it's – 
mostly it's pure muscle memory. The more you do it, the better it's going to get eventually. What do you, what do you think about the team kind of uh, in general struggling shooting the three this year? And what's, I guess, what's it like when that's the case and your shot isn't falling and you know you kind of want to help that cause? Oh, well, it's tough. It's tough saying, especially like some games Then uh, even when I was out watching like the, the Hornets game, you know, you see guys are getting the looks that we want. Like we're moving the ball, we're getting wide open looks and it's just not going in. So, you know, as fans might get pissed off about that, this doesn't, but I'm like me on that point when I was watching, I was like, well, we're playing good. Like we were finding what we need. It's just about shots falling. And uh, I think with all the teams in NBA, it's just there's some stretches that it's not falling, and then there's just some stretches that everything goes right, and then some games that you think that you're not even getting the good shots and it falling. So, it's, it's <clears throat> I think shooting overall and in general for most teams is is an up and down thing. It's just keeping consistency on defense, and uh, and like we've been great getting to the paint scoring inside and, and even tonight so those are the keys you know it's defense and pain and then if the shots start falling then it's it's really hard to stop us what's it like for you to see mantras as successful as he is but also involve the crowd to the degree that he does man it's like i think uh a couple of times after against Brad already told us, like I told him the first day I saw him when he, when he walked in the practice facility uh, preseason, uh, I was like, man, I'm happy you're on our side because <laughs> I said I hated playing against you every single time. And I think that's that's what he does to other teams. That's what he does to the crowd. That's what he does to his teammates. Like he just brings the energy every single night and uh, he's basically an, an engine for this team coming off the bench. And, uh, you know, he can get us going in a, in a bad game every single night. Heck, you just gave him a great compliment to say you're glad you don't have to play him. Oh, yeah. That's, what, what makes him so much more fit? He, like, he's just relentless. He's going to the glass every time when he gets the ball down low. Like, you see him, like, he goes for dunks every single time. And uh, the only way I think the, the other team can stop him is just fouling him. And this, as I said, I've had a chance to play against him for what? Five years, you know, minus some of the years that I didn't play minutes. But like, I mean, remember my rookie year that I was in San Antonio and I think he was in Clippers and some the what you call the garbage time. Uh, we were either up, down, 30, I don't remember, but he was in and I think we almost got in a fight and we both got technical fouls just because he he just gets under your skin every single night, every single time he's on the court. What was it like uh, having Rui on the bench for the first time in a game? Uh, it, was, it was actually nice to see him in the facility before earlier and uh, and good to have him back. You know, he's definitely an, another player that can help us uh, inside and out. And, uh, you know, we just we just can't wait for him to be back. Uh, yeah, some weird sounds coming from there. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's nice to have him back. And, uh, you know, he's the... The guy that he kind of jokes around a little bit sometimes too, like even though you don't think so, uh, like it's good to have him have him around. Yeah. Neil. Hey Davis, um, you obviously had a pretty significant ankle sprain. You know, I think Coach, you know, described to us the swelling was, you know, quite large. What has that process been like for you? And do you feel like you're finally gotten your legs back underneath you after the road trip? Well, hopefully we'll see. But as I said, that's the same thing with not just shooting is the just keeping up the routine, keeping up the work and uh, treatments and all that stuff. And, uh, you know, the, the ankle is going to get better and better day by day. And, uh, you know, the it wasn't easy to jump right back in, uh, especially on a road trip right away. But overall, it feels good. You know, the first couple of games might have been like uh, just like jumping back on a moment train. But, uh, but yeah, it feels good now. And there were a couple times, you know, you were just driving, cutting straight to the rim. Spencer hit you for an easy one. Is that something that you're reading on the fly with how defenses are reacting to you? Or is that maybe something where you're like, okay, the threes aren't falling right now. Let me see if I can go do something else. Uh, no, this is, uh, I think it's more of a team that we're playing against. Uh, they try to play the passing lanes. And uh, that was emphasis for us as a team, just to find those, those open spaces, the cuts and uh, have them 
get confused on defense a little bit. I think we got a few good looks from the three because of uh, somebody cutting and and a lot of easy layups.